So I guess the moral of the story is just wait a few days and your sales will return. Hey everyone, welcome back into the channel. My name is Andrew and along with my wife, Jessica, we run a full-time online reselling business where we go to garage sales, thrift stores, and estate sales, and we buy stuff for cheap, and then we flip those items online for a profit on sites like Mercari, Facebook, Poshmark, and of course, eBay. So today's video is gonna be in two different parts. The first part I'm gonna show you is a cool shipping trick that for those who might be a little bit hesitant in shipping breakables, you may wanna check out. The second part is kind of an answer to last video where we talked about our declining eBay sales. So I guess the moral of the story is just wait a few days and your sales will return. But first, let's check out that shipping video. Hey guys, it's Monday. I am doing my shipping for things that have sold over the weekend. And I ran across a shipping tip that I use quite often that some of you might find helpful. Um, in this example, um, I'm going to use this right here since it's fairly breakable. And some people don't like to ship breakable things. But I'm going to show you an easy way to really ship this um, and so it's doubly protected. In a, in a sense, it's double boxing, but without using another box. And what I'm going to use is this. And that is really nothing more than a cut down inner cardboard tube from something you might already have, which is a bundle of bubble wrap. So how this works is that basically you can wrap this up in bubble wrap stick it in here, which then is extra protected, and this can go into your standard 864 box. And it would still act as a double box. So let me walk you through the process one moment. So really all I need are two sheets of bubble wrap. Let me get this one started. And now that figurine is wrapped one time in bubble wrap. And if you notice, it's still a little bit loose when you put it into the tube. There's still a lot of wiggle room in here. So because of that, I'm going to wrap it one additional time with one extra sheet of bubble wrap. So let me do that. So now we have the figure wrapped twice with two sheets of bubble wrap. And she is sufficiently packaged enough where now with some resistance, I can get her into this tube. Now you might have to press gently just to get the bigger sections to fit in there nicely. But once you do, you can see she's kind of peeking out one end there and the other. Now I just grabbed this tube out of the garage because I do have multiple of these. So I probably would have cut this a little bit longer but as you can see now, though, this is really, really tough. Like I am crushing that with my hand and it's not moving. And it doesn't add a whole lot of weight to this. So now what I would probably do is tape either end so that that's not going to shift. And now I can pad this even more by putting it into the 864 box. And it's not going to add a ton of weight. Sorry, my scale is really slow to start up here. But as you can see... Even with some extra padding in here, it's probably going to ship out at the 8-ounce rate. So, figure that might be a little bit advantageous to those who might be a little bit scared in shipping breakable figures. That way you're not using an extra box either. So it's really only one box and some stuff that you may already have on hand. So the reason why this all came about, again, this was just an example. I sold this this weekend, and this is uh, kind of an interesting find. This is a 3D representation of a Salvador Dali painting, a little sculpture. It measures about 10 inches tall, and we found this at Goodwill last week. We picked it up for $1, and it just sold yesterday for 50 And the reason why, I could have probably got more, but if you see, I don't know camera can focus, but there's a little tip that's missing right there at the very top. So I reduced it a little bit, but 50 bucks. So the reason why I decided to shoot this video was because now I have one of these other cores. This is the full size that I'm going to do something very similar for. So I'm going to basically wrap that up, 
Now in this instance, the base is a little bit too wide to go fully into the tube, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up fully with bubble wrap twice, like I did with the figurine, and once that is there, I could put another thing of bubble wrap around the end and tape it up, and it should still act very similar. So let me see what I can do here. So now what I have is that elephant figurine wrapped in two sheets of bubble wrap. And as you can see, when I put the top on, it's a good fit. There is a little play in here, which means that there is a possibility that during shipping, this whole thing could move around on the inside, and that's not what I want. I want to make this as secure as possible within the tube so there's no shifting around. So what I'm going to try is I have some just kind of thin uh, foam sheets from other packages. I guess I'm kind of a hoarder of packing material. And I also have some tissue paper that I can try. So I'll let you know what works out best right here. So what I decided with was to, because that strip of foam was fairly long, I just wrapped it around the inside. So there's, in addition to the two bubble wrap pieces, I have that foam piece in there too. And so now when I push down on it, there's enough pressure from the wrap itself to kind of hold things better in place. So what I'm going to do now is kind of push this down and fill this void with probably that tissue paper. All right, so in the end, what I did was I took two sheets of bubble wrap, they were contiguous, folded them the long way, so I made one long rectangular strip and then wrapped that around the base. And then I basically folded in the ends and taped that up. I'm also gonna be taping up the top as well, and then I'll show you the box and the packing that I'll be using for that. And yes, it did topple over at the end of the last clip, so that's fine. We've packed it well enough where it's going to survive now again. So here's the bottom, here's the top. I've taped up the tube, and luckily I have a fairly long box that I saved from Amazon. And so now this is just going to fit right in there. And I'm going to pad it at the bottom with some packing paper. And I could even wrap this up a couple of times in bubble wrap, which may be overkill at this point, um, but I'm definitely going to wrap it up with some packing paper. And that's going to be about it. So here is the bottom of the box with packing paper. This is the tube wrapped up in more paper. Now I'm going to put one more layer on top. All right, so here's the final package. Definitely double boxed in essence, and still fairly light. Let's go check out the weight. Even though the sculpture itself only weighed probably a couple of ounces, I did charge the two pound rate because I knew I was going to box it up appropriately. So that actually turned out to be less than a pound, which is fantastic. So I'll definitely be able to refund some shipping once I process that. So not too bad. Double boxed and less than a pound for something that's potentially breakable on its own. So hopefully you found that helpful. And the next time that you go to ship out something breakable, you'll think about this. Thanks for watching. I hope some of you found that video helpful. I do use that trick all the time. So as we move into the sales portion of the video, I want to kind of do an answer video, a part two, if you will, from last time. So you'll notice from last time, our sales trend was on the downward spiral, right? It was kind of doom and gloom. Our eBay impressions were falling off the cliff and our eBay sales were dwindling. Well, like I said previously, all we needed to do was wait a few days, keep listing, and our sales will return. So I want to revisit that impressions graph. So here is the original one that I used last video, where you can see again that noticeable dip in impressions. Now, what I'm going to do is bring up the current graphic, and as you can see, our impressions have largely returned back to normal. And along with that, we have definitely noticed an uptick in eBay sales. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing a midweek video of what sold, because we actually had so many sales. So I don't know what sort of glitch was going on over at eBay, but it seems as though it has been fixed for now. Uh, of course, I'll keep monitoring it, and hopefully sales will keep flooding on in.
So now speaking of sales, let's go ahead and dive right in. These are sales that occurred between July 28 and August 1 in our eBay, Mercari, and Poshmark stores. The first item up was this Star Trek, Trek Yourself Before You Wreck Yourself, Boys Blue Mr. Spock t-shirt, and it sold for $7.99 plus shipping. Next up was this Horny Toad Harley Davidson motorcycle shirt from Temple, Texas. We took a best offer of $18.39 plus shipping. Next up was a consignment sale from our friend Larry, and interestingly enough, it kind of tied into one of our previous video themes on flatware. This was for a set of six international silver continental pattern hollow handle dinner forks, and these sold for $14.99 plus shipping. Following that, a buyer came in and bought two of our remaining stock of these. These were 2022 Chick-fil-A stuffed plush cow animal toys, and these sold together for $9.98 plus shipping. Up next was this Vans boys size large long sleeve skateboard hoodie, and it sold on best offer of $21.15 plus shipping. And this next item was the star of the shipping hack video. This was that celestial space elephant from the Salvador Dali painting called The Temptation of St. Anthony. And again, this sold for $49.99 plus shipping. So I wanted to give a quick shout out to my youngest daughter, Melina, who went along with us on this thrift store trip uh, when we found this elephant. And so the running joke in our household is that her dog is a chihuahua and the chihuahua has really skinny legs. And in fact, she calls it a chicken, like a chicken leg. Well, when we ran across this sculpture, it too had very, very skinny legs as you saw from the video. So the running joke was that it had legs very much like her dog. So we called it the chicken leg sculpture. Well, needless to say that when we looked it up in the store and realized that it did have some good sold comps, we were thrilled. So it just goes to show that you never know what you're going to find in those stores and to look up everything that looks interesting. The next item that sold was this New Era Dallas Cowboys hat, and it sold for $12.99 plus shipping. The next item up was from our bulk toy bin buy. If you are a longtime viewer of the channel, you may remember a number of videos back where we bought this large kind of just random toy bin from Goodwill. And I ended up going through there and pulling out things that I thought would sell. And we did a couple of videos to kind of show our progress. And life happened and it kind of fell off the face of the earth. But this actually did sell from it. This was a bluey two and a half inch loose action figure from the Pool Time figure playset. And it sold for $4.99 plus shipping. Next up were these Skechers Bob's Women's Size 11 plush double vision slip-on shoes with a Boston Terrier theme. And these ended up selling for $18.99 plus shipping. Next up was this vintage 1995 Hamburglar figurine from McDonald's, and this sold for $4.99 plus shipping. Next up was this Tervis 16 ounce DC Comics Superman logo insulated tumbler, and it sold for $9.99 plus shipping. This next item was a lot of three Party Pop Teenies figures from Series 1, and these sold for $9.99 free shipping. These figures came out of that LOL bulk buy, the one where we recently had the debacle with the guy trying to return them when he didn't tell us what was missing. If you remember that, yeah. So we bought a bulk buy of stuff and these figures actually came out of that. The next item was a super quick sale. This was a Snoopy Build-A-Bear from the Peanuts movie. It was Snoopy in an aviator jacket and he sold for $24.99 plus shipping. If I'm not mistaken, this sale probably took place about 30 minutes after it was listed. And the final two items that sold from our eBay store were featured in the last video, which featured our estate sale finds. This first item was the Canon PowerShot A4000 camera. I ended up going through and testing it. It was in great condition and it sold for $99.99 plus shipping. Now on the other end of the condition spectrum, this was the vintage Star Wars ATST Imperial Scout Walker from 1982, and this one didn't really work at all. In fact, it was in pretty poor shape, but I knew that looking at sold comps that these were still desirable, so I ended up selling it for $12.99 plus shipping. And now we'll dive into the sales from our Mercari store. First up is this set of two Melissa and Doug wooden jumbo knob three-piece puzzles 
featuring barnyard animals and jungle friends. These sold on best offer for $10 plus shipping. Next item up was a 2009 Thomas the Tank Engine bulk fabric swatch from VIP Cranston, and this ended up selling for $15 plus shipping. Next up, we took a best offer on this navy blue LSU embroidered strap back hat. Buyer paid $8 plus shipping. The next item certainly has a story behind it. This is a hand blown glass pig head in green, which measures about three quarters of an inch long, and it sold for $4.99 plus shipping. So the story behind this item is that my daughter works at a thrift store in the area. We go in there a few times a week as part of our normal sourcing operation. And one day I found a box of what were pig heads, literally glass pig heads, chickens and owls in boxes. And they're all very, very small little animals, hand blown glass, um, definitely not mass produced. Um, there were probably six or seven bulk boxes of these, each having, you know, maybe 10 to 15 pieces. So I figured that there would be somebody out there that would find these interesting and would want them for a collection. So I made not only a full set of all of the different colors that were included, but I also listed all the individual colors separately. And this was one of those ones that were listed. So super cute. I have pig heads, owls, and chickens, if you want to check those out. The next item up we also took a best offer on. This was a new with tags pair of Old Navy size 6 blue mid-rise boyfriend jeans, and these sold for $12 plus shipping. Next up was this discontinued Scentsy Bar. This was the coffee tree scent, and it went out the door for $7 plus shipping. And the final item from our Mercari store was these Dr. Scholl's Men Size 9 gray suede leather derby wingtip shoes. And these ended up selling for $12 on a best offer plus shipping. And the final sale of this video, and is the only sale that we have out of Poshmark for the last number of days, were these BKE Women's Size 31 Sabrina Bootcut Distressed Stretch Blue Denim Jeans. And these sold on a best offer of $30 plus shipping. Well, that's about all for today's video. I hope that you found the shipping portion of it both entertaining and informational. If you like that kind of content, go ahead and drop a comment below and let me know. And if you don't mind, go ahead and like and subscribe to the video and the channel. And with that, I will catch you on the next one.